there's a very important airbrush adjustment that in my opinion doesn't get talked about as much as it should. And I'm not really sure why this is, but one reason might be because this adjustment is hidden inside the body of the airbrush. It's located just behind the paint cup and this of course is the needle packing screw. Over in Photoshop, I set up a few images to show how this works. The needle of the airbrush slides through this screw and creates a seal. And this seal is very important because it prevents the paint from leaking back into the body of the airbrush. When paint is added to the cup, this seal kind of acts like a dam, restricting the paint to the front of the airbrush where it's supposed to be. But if this seal is too loose or damaged in some way, that paint can easily find its way into the trigger assembly or even worse, down into that air valve. This is one reason why I'm not a huge fan of mixing paint within the airbrush by back flushing it. When you back flush, the paint is forced back into the airbrush, and this is done by pinching the needle and pressing down on the trigger for air. You'll know that it's back flushing the paint because you'll see bubbles like this within the cup. Obviously, both the air and the paint are supposed to flow out of the front of the airbrush, so when you back flush, the air is going this way into the cup, which mixes the paint. But that paint is also forced back against that needle packing screw. And if it's not forming a good seal with that needle, you'll end up with paint in the needle housing, around the trigger, and the air valve assembly. So in order to prevent this and keep all that paint in the front of the airbrush, what we need to do is check the needle packing screw. And the first thing I want to do here is to show you how to get to that screw. I'm taking off the rear handle, the chuck, the needle, and this whole spring assembly along with the trigger. From here, I could see inside the back of the airbrush. And in most airbrushes, like 99% of them, this is where you'll be able to adjust that screw. I highly recommend picking up one of these special screwdrivers. You can see that it's a flathead screwdriver at the end, but it has this little point sticking out at the front. These are made for one purpose, and that's to adjust and remove that needle packing screw. I always have a few of these on hand. They go for like five bucks or so, and I'll have a link to this one down below. So what you want to do with this is insert it into the back of the airbrush and try to put it right in the center. You should feel the front part of it slide through the needle packing screw. And then with very little pressure on it, you want to turn it counterclockwise, meaning to the left, until you feel it grab the little notches in the screw. That small metal prong on the front of this tool will hold that needle packing screw in place. So you should have no problem unscrewing it. And you can see like this, it just holds it right there so you don't lose it. But I want to point out right here that there's no reason to ever take this out unless you're replacing it. The adjustment for it is done while it's inside the body of the airbrush. The only reason that I'm fully removing it is just to show what it looks like for this video. And inside the body of the airbrush, the needle slides through it just like this. And at the very front of this, you'll see that small white o-ring or washer. That's the PTFE seal. And what's nice about PTFE or Teflon is that it's solvent proof. Personally, I don't use solvent-based paints anymore. I think modern acrylics are just way more advanced. But if you are using solvents, you're not going to have to worry about them damaging this seal. And if you took this out to replace it or check it, it's really simple to put back in. The first thing you want to do is just place it on this special screwdriver and then place it in the back of the airbrush and you'll feel it make contact with the threads. Once it grabs on, just screw it in. I'll screw it in all the way until I feel it stop. Again, putting no pressure on it. You don't want to tighten this down. And then once it hits that end point, I just unscrew it about a half to a three quarter turn. Usually around there, it's pretty good. In order to adjust the screw and make sure that it's set correctly, what you want to do is screw back in the spring assembly, which acts as a guide for that needle. So it slides correctly through the body of the airbrush. Then what I like to do is take the needle and place it in backwards. The reason for this is just in case that seal is too tight, you don't risk damaging it from a sharp needle. So once the needle's in, about halfway through the airbrush, you'll feel a point where it slides through that needle packing screw. You'll just feel a bit of tension, and that's what you want. Just a very small amount of tension. If you feel that, it means it's making a seal and you're good to go. When I checked this right now, I didn't feel any tension at all, no friction. That's no good. That means it's too loose. So I took the spring assembly out and just tightened it about a quarter of a turn to the right. What happens with the needle packing screw is that as you tighten it down, it compresses that PTFE seal. And if it's too tight, like in this example here, you'll know right away. The tighter that screw is tightened down, the more it'll grip the needle. You can see as I'm pressing this in here, I can barely get it through. This is no good, and you can easily damage that seal or the needle if it's too tight. Another thing you may notice if that seal is too tight is that the airbrush trigger may get stuck in the back position. 
So what I'll do here is loosen it by unscrewing it a very small amount, like an eighth or a quarter turn. And to save some time, I'll just place this needle in backwards without that spring assembly. And this is perfect here. You can see there's just a very small amount of friction on that needle. And as long as you feel a small amount of friction, you're good to go and the seal is set. And I want to point out here that you're not really adjusting this screw for feel like you would with the trigger spring tension. It's either creating a seal or it's not. And as long as you feel a small amount of tension, like I'm showing right here, you're set. So now that this is set correctly, I'll put the needle back in the correct way and I'm ready to paint for many months without having to think about this adjustment. Over time with extended use, this screw tends to loosen up and you could usually tell right away when you remove the needle for cleaning, you'll notice that there's just no more tension on it. When I'm painting nearly every day, about every six months, sometimes even longer, I'll just check the screw and tighten it the smallest amount. Even like an eighth of a turn clockwise is enough to set it correctly. So the good news is you don't have to make this adjustment that often, usually like once or twice a year. And I own a lot of airbrushes and every one I have, even the cheap ones, these are almost always set correctly from the factory. One thing that I like to do every week or so is just add a small amount of lubrication on the needle. This bottle on the left is made by Badger. I bought this about 10 years ago. and I just feel like this bottle will last a lifetime. And on the right, I have Iwata Lube. This usually comes free with an Iwata airbrush. With lubrication, I only lube one part on the airbrush and that's the needle. I found that while lubrication on the trigger and spring make the airbrush feel smoother, over time, like a month, maybe two months, that lube tends to collect gunk and dust, and it just becomes a constant cycle of cleaning and then adding more lube. I found that keeping my airbrushes clean, maybe deep cleaning them every now and then, that they just perform better without any lubrication, especially on the higher end ones like Harder and Steambex and Iwata's. But on the needle, I found that it slides better through the needle packing screw, and also just helps a tiny bit with tip dry. So I'll place one drop of the lubrication right in the middle of the needle, and then just rub it around toward the front. I want a thin coating of this lubrication all along the front of the needle, but I don't need any toward the back because that's not gonna slide through the needle packing screw and no paint is gonna go back there. And then I'll take a microfiber towel or a shop towel and then run it over the needle to remove any excess lubrication. When you do this, it just leaves the smallest film on the needle and that's all you need. I found that less lube works much better than more and just a thin coating will help it slide very easily through that needle packing screw. And you'll notice it right away when you place the needle back in. On some airbrushes, like this Iwata Micron, you'll notice that there's a small cutout or window in the body of the airbrush. I love this feature because what it allows you to do is adjust that needle packing screw without having to remove the entire back of the airbrush. What I like to do is remove the needle and then just use a very small flathead screwdriver. This needle packing screw has some slots on the side of it. You could just place that screwdriver in and adjust it as needed. It's such a simple little feature, but I absolutely love it. I'm cleaning out a few different airbrushes, so don't mind the gloves, but you'll see the same thing in almost every airbrush here on the Harder and Steambeck Infinity. It's basically the same thing. The only brand that I own that works differently are Badger airbrushes. Fortunately, the Badger Patriot 105 is the same thing that I just showed from the Iwata Revolution and the Infinity. It's just a small screw in the front. But on the Sotar 2020, which is one of my favorite airbrushes, it works a bit differently. There is still a PTFE seal in here, but on this one, it's actually pressed in rather than screwed in. So there's no adjustment screw. It's just held in by compression. It's a real pain to adjust. I've done it a few times, but the good news is that Badger has a lifetime warranty on this. You're not supposed to be able to adjust it. So if anything goes wrong, they'll replace it. So that's it for this video. If you notice some paint in the back of your airbrush, just check this seal and adjust it. I wanna say thank you so much to the kind and generous support of the channel members, which you'll see scrolling up on the right side of the screen. Thank you for watching. I'll be back here next Friday and we'll continue on with some painting.